Well, we've come to the point in our service where we remember Christ around his table. And this is a time for Christians to remember what Jesus did for them when he went to the cross. In a few minutes, we're going to be taking a small wafer and a bit of juice. And these are symbols of the body and the blood of Christ that was offered at the cross. It's really important that we remember Christ rightly. So to do that, we're going to be using our Bibles. Today, we're going to be looking at the way in which Christ was used by the Lord to bring about the unification between the Jew and the Gentile. So if you have your Bibles, would you turn with me to Ephesians chapter 3? We're going to be looking at verses 11 through 13. And if you don't have a Bible, simply raise your hand. I think there are going to be some men coming down the aisles. They will get a Bible to you. And if you don't actually own a Bible, please consider this as our gift to you so that you can begin reading God's Word for yourself. One of the greatest mysteries in scripture is that God would unite the Jew and the Gentile together in his household. And Paul shares that in his letter to the church in Ephesus. He begins that in verse 15 of chapter 2, where he says that the two are going to be made into one new man. The idea continues in verses 18 and 19 of chapter 2, where both the Jew and the Gentile have access to the Father And the Gentile is no longer a stranger or an alien to the Jew. Paul gets specific as we get down into chapter 3 in verse 6. You see that the Gentiles are fellow heirs. They're fellow members of the body and they're fellow partakers of the promise in Christ. Then Paul spends verses 7, 8, and 9 explaining how God used him to begin that process as he took the gospel to the Gentile world in the first generation of the church. When you get to verse 10, you see the scope of the task that's in front of Paul and the rest. You see the idea that God has here. This doesn't have merely earthly implications. This has implications beyond just this earth that the wisdom of God might now be made known through the church, where? To the rulers and the authorities in the heavenly places. So God has an intention that rulers and authorities in the heavenly places marvel at his wisdom as he brings the Jew and the Gentile together in one new man. And this is a significant event for us. Because if you consider the Jew, you consider that the Jew had, they had the covenants. Starting with Abraham and moving forward, they had covenants. Those were exclusive to them. They also had the law. They had the law that represented God's own character. God gave it to them. They were the ones who were adopted as sons. God said, I will be your God and you will be my people. And they had the promises that a Messiah would come from them. They had all of those things and they had more. And the Gentile didn't have any of those things. So there was a great divide between the two. So any operation, any event that would bring them together was massive and epic in its proportions. And we're going to see that in the passage that we read together. And as we do, look at the end of verse 11 and note the role that Christ plays in that process. Paul writes, This was in accordance with the eternal purpose which he carried out in Christ Jesus our Lord in whom we have boldness and confident access through faith in him. First word in our passage, this, refers again to the unification of the Jew and the Gentile together in God's household. But we see that this is a plan that God has had all along. It's God's eternal purpose. This means that this was in God's mind before the foundations of the world in eternity past. But it also means that it has implications into eternity future as the Jew and the Gentile will worship God forever together in eternity. So this is a a huge event. But we see the role that Christ plays at the end of verse 11. God carried this out in Christ Jesus. Paul isn't specific about the role that Christ plays in this. He is in other places in the letter. If you just jump back to chapter 1 verse 7, you can see that. God says, in him, that is Christ, we have redemption through his blood. And he says, we have redemption. So the Jew and the Gentile together have redemption in Christ's blood. Redemption, again, is to be purchased away from the power of another by the payment of the price. And right there in verse 7, you can see what that price is. It's Christ's blood. 
So the Jew and the Gentile are united together because of the work that Christ did at the cross. This had to be something that was together, that God did together. Because in order for the Jew and the Gentile to be united together, Christ had to do the very same thing for the Gentile that he did for the Jew. That is, suffer in their place at the cross. And we see the benefit of that in verse 12. Where there is spoken a boldness and a confident access. The believer, whether they are Jew or Gentile, has the boldness. What do they have the boldness for? They have the boldness to say, I have been redeemed. I have been reconciled to God. It was through the blood of Christ. The Jew and the Gentile together has access to God because they have the same Savior, the same Lord. So Christian, if you're here this morning, whether you're Jew or you're Gentile, you can celebrate the very same thing, that Christ, when he went to the cross, he reconciled you to him and to you, to the God in heaven. And the way that he did that was he took your sin upon himself and he bore that sin in his own body and he suffered God's anger and wrath against all of that sin, fully satisfying it by saying at the end of it all, it is finished. That is what we want to remember about Christ today, that Christ is the one who did the work for anybody who would put their faith and their trust in him. So believer, when the elements come to you, take them and hold them and consider these truths. And after you have done that, uh, take the elements when your heart has been prepared. If you're here this morning and you are not a follower of Christ, that is to say that you don't submit to his lordship in your life. When the elements come to you, just pass them to the person next to you. But put your attention on verse 12. Use this time well. Consider the fact that the person who submits their Lord to Jesus Christ, they have boldness. They have boldness to claim that I have been reconciled to God. I have no need of fear of death because I know that Christ did everything to secure my salvation by dying in my place at the cross. They have access to God through Christ because they put their trust in him and what he did for them at the cross. After the service, we will have somebody up here at the front to your left. They will love to talk to you and pray with you. They have a Bible. They will be able to talk to you and show you from their own life and from God's word what it looks like to follow Christ. So men, come and serve us. And when you receive the elements, take them on your own when your heart is prepared.